right, guys. So could it be? Are we working on a white rock? Yes, we are. So I base painted my rock white. Uh, I believe this was a chalk paint. It was a chalk craft paint that I used. Now I'm just taking a an envelope for a straight edge. That was what I could find. Um, and what I did was I found the center of my rock and marked a vertical line. And now I'm drawing two horizontal lines. And those are going to be boundary boxes. Now... I don't go with these two lines. I actually pull them in about a quarter of an inch. Um, and you see how I'm rounding my lettering just a little bit? Because this is a domed face rock, um, a straight line sometimes will look curved. So you have to, even though I used a, a straight envelope, straight edge to get the line, it still looked curved. So you have to, sometimes you'll have to manipulate the line a little bit uh, if the face of your rock is curved. So now I'm kind of working out how I'm going to do my lettering. There's four letters. Obviously we're doing the le word love, so there's four letters. And then when I'm looking at it, I can tell that I've got my lines too far down that my I'm going to be cutting off some of my lettering. I need my boundary box to be able to hold the whole word love. So we're going to have to make them a little bit, the lettering a little bit smaller so that the whole word will fit in there correctly. And that center line just gives me an idea of where the L and the O are going to be and the V and the E are going to be. If this had been five letters, it, I would have done a different technique to figure out my spacing. And if you want to, what you can do is draw four identical rectangle boxes and put your lettering inside of that if you're concerned about getting the proper spacing. I've done a lot of lettering, um, so I can kind of work it out in my head. But if you're not real comfortable with it, make four boxes and use those as boundary boxes. Meaning they'll end up being edges of your letters. And this is just the font that I chose. Um, if you have another font that you're fond of, use that. I just went with a, a block lettering for the bottom love, the, which will be the pink love, because I needed a, a more bold lettering in the back. And then we're going to go with a cursive love that will be the black love on top. I got my V just a little bit too wide. So just take your time in, in drawing out your lettering. Sometimes this can, it can take a minute to get all your spacing correct. Now I, I have feet, the serifs on my lettering. And on a couple of letters, I think the V and the E, I have those joined together. And that helps. So crowding my letters together helped me get the whole word onto this rock without having to compromise the shape of the letters due to the roundness of the rock, if that makes any sense. So you'll see the V and the E at the top are going to share the same kind of foot. They're going to just kind of blend together. And then the V on the left-hand side at the top wraps over the top of the O. So you can do things like that to manipulate the spacing of your lettering without compromising your design.
So now we're going to go in and erase any of the pencil lines that are not part of the rock. I'm trying to keep my area free of eraser debris because you don't want that to get into your paint. So I've chosen a, a pink color by Liquitex Basics and I'm just going to do a base coat because I'm using uh, the glitter, oh, what is it, uh, Extreme Glitter by Folk Art and it is kind of translucent. The the binder for the glitter is kind of translucent. It has a pink tint to it. So I need to paint in this base coat. Otherwise, the pink's going to be really, really soft. And it's not going to have the look that I'm, I'm going for. So whether or not you need to paint a base coat of color uh, is going to be determined by the type of glitter paint that you're using. And now I'm just going in and tidying up around the, the pink letters. This is just my base coat, the white chalk paint. Because when you erase on white, sometimes it'll leave a dirty smudge. So I just want to clean up all those lines. Now, now I'm taking and painting in the glitter. And this may take you a couple of coats. I like to have a solid coat of glitter. I don't like like bald patches in my glitter. So it usually takes me one or two coats. And I'm just going to fast forward through this step. There's nothing fancy about this. We're just laying in color. So now that we've let that dry completely, I'm going in and doing the top love. This one's going to be in black. And I'm doing mine in cursive. I just recently found out a friend of mine told me that they do not teach cursive in school anymore. I don't have kids, so I didn't know that. <laughs> so if you don't know how to do cursive, just do another, another font style that you like. You just want... If it's gonna, the design is gonna look better if it's smaller and a looser font. You know that has more movement in it, whereas the bottom, the pink love, is, you know, more rigid, with straight lines. So I'm just working out my spacing here. I should have, and I would recommend that you go in and draw a line, a boundary line for the bottom of your letters. I didn't do that in my letters. Um, it was hard for me to see it until I started painting it in, but I had them at going at an upward slope. And so I had to fix that later on. Um, and you'll kind of, you'll be able to see it but I wouldn't have had that headache to deal with if I had drawn in a, a bottom boundary line. So now I'm just painting in my letters and then I'm going to go in and thicken them up in the areas that I, I want thicker because I want it to have thin and thick lines just like the bottom love does. Plus, I'm going to have to do that on some of them just to get them to be even across the bottom. Now, my L was supposed to be larger and go down lower than the other three letters. So that part of the design was intentional the steady slope for upwards was not intentional.
and the black I'm using is the black airbrush paint by Createx. As you know, this is my go-to black. I love that paint. Now you can kind of see how it's got an upward slant to it. And I will be fixing that. But right now I'm going in and just erasing some of the pencil marks. Now this is an electric eraser, which is a little bit more aggressive. So it will take off some of the paint. If you use an electric eraser, it does a great job. But just know that you are going to have to go in and touch up some of your paint. But now that I've got the paint, that that pink love has creates, it's got some dimension now because of the multiple layers of paint. So it's harder for just a regular eraser to get in between those small areas between the letterings. So I used an electric eraser. And this is just one I got off of Amazon. Um, it is the... Oh, hoo hoo battery operated eraser. It's spelled O H U H U, is the brand. And it's just a cheap little eraser. So now I'm just going in and touching up my background again. You definitely want to make sure you saw me touch my letters a minute ago. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that your all your black is dry before doing this because you don't want to muddy up your paint and turn your background gray in areas. And you just want to take the extra time to make sure all of your lines are real clean. So now I'm going in and pulling the bottom of each letter down a little bit to try to even out the word. And there we go. And this is the rock when it's been sprayed with the Triple Thick Glaze by Rust-Oleum. This is one coat. I normally do two. I just let the first one dry really well. So a couple of hours. It dries to the touch very fast, but I let it cure for a couple of hours before I do a second coat. There you go. My Etsy shop is now open and most of my rocks are in there. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And I will see you in the next video.